match. Here we go. It's Diaz versus Atto. The second match of the second stream of today. Or I guess it's the first match of the second stream. Either way, we can all agree that New Fear is the best for bringing us two streams a day. And this one is going to be juicy. Although it's not going to be actually juicy. It's going to be Diaz and Atto. But you can tell that Diaz is always bringing a show. In fact, I would say both these guys are always bringing a show. As Diaz goes for the air dribble, Musty off the resets to go crossbar down and in. So the early lead, if you guys are wondering, what is the ping? Because I know many of you will be asking. Atto is playing on 104 to Diaz's 88. So it's definitely not an ideal situation for Atto. And he comes in probably as... You know, the underdog anyways. Diaz, a very high level ones player right now. At the top of the top. Atto did a good job in Salt Mine. But Diaz was like basically number two. Would you guys agree that Diaz finished Salt Mine? I guess it's either Diaz, first killer, or Wavy. But especially in the days following Salt Mine, I think Diaz kind of pulled himself away as the, the number one player playing on USC servers. And the fact that Daniel has been inactive for so long, you can even argue that Diaz is the number one player on USC servers right now. Um, he's had a couple tough matches, though, that, now that I think about it, against a couple of other top players recently. So I don't know. You know, maybe, maybe it is still up in the air, but look at Diaz chain dashing. Hato is actually going to chain dash back in order to get the save. So it is a chain dash tip for tat, and now Diaz air dribble out of the corner. Decides to go no reset, just carry it all the way in, and that's not going to be enough. Atto with his first chance on offense. A little irritable bump attempt. Diaz gets out and around it and has the save. And now he's right back the other way. This is going to be a great match. <laughs> this is going to be a great match. If you've tuned in for the first four goals already, I think you know. Not just because of the way Diaz likes to play, but the way Atto likes to play as well. Diaz not using his reset in the air and instead a little wave dash catch to put himself on that opposite side of the ball and chip it in behind Atto. The only issue might be if Diaz is a little bit too on fire, it could get a little one-sided, but I actually have faith in Atto to get going here. I think he's a little bit more rusty in terms of ones compared to Diaz. But he said today his internet has been behaving. Atto, I think, frequently while at home has internet problems. It's not been uncommon for him to almost wait until he's at boot camp for big events to want to play show matches because he wants to have you know the best possible connection and obviously he doesn't have a great one with 100 ping but I think mostly he probably cares about it being steady and I bet you that that's what he's referring to when he says the internet has been behaving today and he's ready to play a match as he gets a save that is off the crossbar and down but Diaz follows it up quickly to dunk it in and it has been all Diaz so far you're pretty sure he doesn't have fiber. I mean, I don't have fiber either. You don't necessarily need fiber. Uh, there's definitely internet that's good enough without fiber. Atto almost had an opportunity at his first goal. A good challenge, but he'll steal the ball off the top of the dribble without it being perfectly on target. This time, he's able to get a save, and that's a good sign going forward as well. Sometimes it just takes a bit defensively to get going against a guy like Diaz. You have to start reading what he's putting against you before you're able to get a couple stops and look at this on the first one he does get he converts with an air dribble reset the other way and a top left placement puts him on the board Diaz by the way about an hour ago I think maybe two hours ago tweeted it's official I think with the classic contract signing gif which according to shift that is rumored to be joining Complexity alongside Raze Bull and CRR in place of Dorito. So we'll see if that comes to fruition here officially in the coming days. But I think it's something that people are really excited about. Diaz trying to go in and out of the net. It's not going to work. Can't get back to the goal line in time. Complexity Diaz. <laughs> Vakanus is trying to do his best to clickbait the title. Let it be known, I would never clickbait you guys. As Atto, he is on the board now. He's gotten going. Ever since his first goal, he's got three straight. 
And he's going to do it the same way Diaz does. Majority through the air. Reset with the last bit of boost. Uses the flip. And bring himself within two. You think that roster will work out well? We, of course, talked about some other new rosters. Oxygen getting Joyo. Rule 1 getting Venom. Basically, all these teams on the outside looking in, making changes to try and get into that top 8. Did any top 8 team switch? I don't think we've seen any top 8 movements, to be fair. Because those teams are so comfortably in the top 8, you know, I wouldn't necessarily expect that. The only suggestions I've seen from chat is that, uh, that Vitality maybe should change. Because maybe they, you know, their aspirations are higher than just top four, which is still a pretty good finish. But it would not surprise me at all to see none of the top eight move. But everybody underneath, I would expect almost all of them to move in an attempt to try and get the edge. We're definitely seeing that from teams just on the outside looking in like Ruan, Complexity. Oxygen, unfortunately, is on the outside looking in. Really only because the way the system works with bid allocation, there's a good chance they're in the top eight if they actually could be without four EU teams ahead of them. Diaz up 7-4. He's been able to get a couple goals going since the Atto run. Is seeing Atto trying to take his dribble away. He rose to meet him and then got a demo on the follow up. 8 4. Probably a game securing goal right there. As now Atto needs a goal every 10 seconds. Certainly not impossible to get that many goals. Definitely not something I would predict. What did the prediction end up being, by the way? As Diaz. Trying to style out for one for the road. Atto going to get the save and do the same thing the other way. 68% in favor of Diaz. I wouldn't even be surprised if it was even a bit more considering how Diaz has played on US East against EU players. I think he has not lost playing against somebody with high ping. He did lose to Jorias, who is arguably an EU player. But that was after Joyas came to North America, I'm pretty sure. So he had low ping. Diaz is going to take this game number one against KC's Atto. So we head to game two. Game number two. Ultimately, the difference was the 5 0 start for Diaz. From then on out. A much closer match, but not enough for Atto to overcome it. As long as he can keep the rest of the series close, he could be okay, but it is Diaz we're talking about. And he goes ahead and gives as many resets as you could want. I believe this was a nice triple reset in the whole process. Finishing with one over the top of Atto. He's going to put himself right back in the lead. That's not the kind of guy who I would almost expect to try and go back and get three resets himself to show that he can do it. Diaz staying glued to that back wall. Was expecting the use of the flip earlier and not a landing on the ground. So it got exposed as Hato goes underneath. Atto able to go up 2-1 with a long bomb across the whole field. Actually, not quite the whole field. He did. He started himself from the whole field, having jumped to dodge Diaz, but the shot is about half field. Crossbar out, but the follow-up in. So Diaz reversing back to follow up with another wave dash 50. Not sure if he started with the wave dash kickoff or not. He saw his opportunity with Atto attacking across the ball from the left side of the field towards the right. There's a good chance he won't be able to win that 50 and will also put himself out of position when he does that. So Diaz just waits for the ball to hit his car and dashes out 
to set up the goal. He is not electing to steal this corner boost, and it's because he recognized that the long shot was there and that he didn't have time, even for a moment, to go pick up the 100, and turns out it doesn't matter. <laughs> he's, he's screwed either way. He had already dug his hole and couldn't get out of it. Atto, the delay kickoff. A bit unconventional, the way he floated to the ball off of a jump. 58 boost, a little bit of a scare tactic with the quick wall dashes, but ultimately does back off, and it is so tough. It is so tough. Only Nass has really played well against Diaz when you allow him to go to work in the air. As he lands, wave dash, cutting the ball to the bottom right. And even then, I don't think Nass has ever gotten the win against Diaz. He's just been able to keep it close. Uh, he does play it a bit more defensively and, and gets away with it to an extent. Just about nobody else has. And now Diaz punishing Atto for being aggressive off the kickoff. Trying to race into that corner and came away with no boost and it's on the wrong side of the play. Diaz not able to get the midfield boost. He'll steal Atto's in the back corner. Atto is a guy who does love his pogos. He won't be able to connect on it here and now he's 50 to put Diaz right in front of the ball. Diaz doesn't need boost to finish that one. Both are giving each other so much space. Yeah, I mean, that is a little bit about how they both like to play. But I do think that Diaz will very likely come away with a win. Is this little camera check? Was he looking at the angle? Was he checking to see if it was on target? Nice bump off the kickoff. Send Diaz way out of position. Demo, Atto should be able to get a goal here. Actually played it slow. Wait, he allowed Diaz to make the save. I don't know why he went for the single touch into wave dash shot. I mean, maybe I'm insane, but I feel like he could just put it on net and there's no way the respawn would have been there. Maybe he was trying to wait for a moment to get a read on, on where Diaz was responding. Either way, he gets his goal as he's able to get back around the ball and quickly tie the game back up. Diaz, is there a player more dangerous off the sidewall on a kickoff in today's 1v1 game? There have been a lot of top players who have done well with that over the time. And actually, most of them, I feel like, play on USC servers. Diaz, a double off the back wall to punish the Atto pre-jump. Atto used a ton of boost to pre-jump and had to even use some of it to get back down into the midfield boost. And now he's out of position. Diaz, take advantage. And so a chip around Diaz. Oh, the disrespectful camera check. I always like to highlight those because unless you're in a show match, Diaz doesn't even know. <laughs> unless he's got this monitor up the other way, he doesn't know that Atto is doing the sick look back. They should give some sort of indicator that a car is in reverse cam just to allow people to do the disrespectful look backs. That being said, it's not like Atto is running away with this game or anything. He is just tied up and down in the series. Oh my goodness, Atto booming the ball. A nice curve dash on the recovery, but I mean, nothing is going to be quick enough to deal with the fact that he blasted the ball on the back wall. You got to get at least a little bit of crossbar so that the ball bounces down and then up as opposed to just straight back out to your own net. Atto has always been able to equalize despite the fact that Diaz is still led in this game and has been the one taking the lead. Atto's keeping himself right there within striking distance. Why hasn't Daniel been playing once? It seems like he falls out of form after not playing for a while. Um, maybe he falls out of one's form. That's what you mean. I, I don't think anything has indicated that he's fallen out of Rocket League form. He's played well in RLCS. 
but shouldn't be too surprising that players who don't stay up in ones probably fall off a bit. He is winning the midfield battle. And again, he will take the lead. Kanato equalized quickly. He's been able to the past four or five times. Now, why players, you know, don't keep playing? They're just, it's, it's tough to maybe stay interested with RLCS. I'm, of course, as a 1v1 streamer, going to try as many possible ways to keep players interested. He has, not a man, might have been the game two securing play right there. Atto on the air dribble bump. Diaz actually skirting around it off to the right as opposed to necessarily over the top. Like most players are able to avoid it. And a fake kickoff means possession is in Diaz's control with a minute left to go and a two goal lead. How solid can Diaz play his advantage? The answer is, he, well, he quickly gave the ball away at the very least. So now it's up to Atto to be very effective. And he's about 100% <laughs> on his chances. And this one is a great air dribble 50. Why Diaz is going in and out of the net and allowing him to get all the way to the goal line before Diaz attempts to save. You know, it doesn't seem like the smartest idea. And it will allow Atto to be within one. Wave dash kickoff is a huge win. Now it's wall to air dribble from Atto. He heard me maybe say Diaz is one of the best off the wall. Atto wants to show he is as well. And a bump on the wave dash landing connects and equalizes the scoreline. Diaz head to the ceiling. Actually, kind of a fake ceiling challenge or recognized the ball was going low. Tried to return down quickly on that top curve of the arena. But Atto saw the challenge coming. Able to bump it out of the way. Who's going to get this final kick? A possession to miss dash from Atto. And it's actually fortunate that Diaz had already decided to go to the sidewall. Otherwise, he would actually have been completely out of position. Diaz, what a read. Atto, did he make it back? Atto, <laughs> if he had 200 boost, he maybe makes it back. An insane pre-jump. Diaz using the flip to put it out ahead of him. But he actually adjusted to that pretty well. And if he had even more boost, he might have been able to get the save. But credit to Diaz. It's, it's really tough to do what he just did, but he makes it look simple, which is reading the defender, early challenging, and, you know, changing the dribble accordingly. In this case, it was booming the ball out. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's a double touch off the backboard, or maybe a triple touch, I should say, off the backboard and off of Atto as he dunks it in. An 11-9 win, or almost certainly a win, in game number two. Make Zen versus Diaz happen. Yeah, Zen hasn't been super active in ones. I do message him on occasion to make sure, you know, he hasn't been interested in playing and I haven't kept up. As far as I'm aware, he's still not interested in, in ones. But Diaz versus Zen on USC servers, who, who would you guys have, chat? Who would be your favorite there? I, I, think, I, I think I might go Diaz if it's played on US East. And uh, Zen has to play on, you know, near 100 ping. Game number three. Diaz and Atto. One thing that I've always thought about doing, although I, I, I thought about doing since the madness, and I don't know what you guys think about, but doing 10 minutes halves for games that are played like on EU and NA. Now, for Diaz, it doesn't make sense because he's all the way on Sam, so USC is just a midway. But if an EU versus an NA player played, you know how they do the back and forth servers? Someone ends up getting more time on their server or more games on their servers than the other. What if instead you just did two 10 minute halves on each server and just kept the same score? It would maybe be interesting. It might be a neat way to handle the cross server matchups. Hey, Atto, he's gonna hit right back. That one could have been a no look. Knowing Atto, I bet you this one could have been a no look. He reads Diaz's challenge well and pops it past him. And then he's kind of already set up the double a few moments before he actually hits it. And so I wouldn't have been surprised if he had put on reverse cam there. Just a flex. But he does stay locked onto the ball and locked into his 1-0 lead. Double jump bump. Diaz is going to get around it. No, he's not. I mean, he is, but not enough to save the ball. So it doesn't really matter as Diaz had too much backwards momentum when he was forced to make that save anyways. He was already supersonic retreating to net when the dribble started. 
So he had so much momentum to fight back against. Diaz to the ceiling. Atto naturally doesn't want to take it to him. So tries to pull off on the dribble, but Diaz has a good enough job at being able to cut that off as well. Oh, crossbar down and in. It's going to be helped out from Atto, but it's hard to blame him for respecting this shot. And credit to Diaz for just pinpointing it. I mean, that was out. In fact, only was it out, it looks like if Atto didn't touch it, it was going to bounce over the backboard as opposed to inside the net. Whereas, if it's going to bounce up and down inside the net, that's basically a goal. Atto shouldn't even feel bad about own goaling it. But if it is going to bounce above the backboard, then having not touched it probably means it wouldn't have been scored. So, Atto certainly going to feel a bit bummed about that. That was an interesting recovery off of the turtle. And can't get the bump, though. Diaz does a good job getting around those. I guess he did get the previous goal. Diaz had a touch on the ball, but not enough to save it. When is Dark versus Zen? I, I like the way that you guys ask, chat. You guys are very creative. Instead of saying, you know, can you do Dark versus Zen? You just say, when is it? As if I'm forced to do it no matter what. Air drill bump from Atto. Diaz again pre-jumped it with a ton of momentum back to his net. And he will not be able to make this save. He, he, in fact, he didn't even he pre jumped it. He didn't have the momentum. He boosted a ton towards his net. And he was never going to be able to stop that momentum. You have no choice. Of course, I have choice, chat. That's a nice recovery. 48 boost to work with. And actually did almost as perfect of a job. Actually, I'll say it's perfect because he didn't get boost, but he did get the goal. Protected the ball and even turned it into a goal himself by having Diaz try and bilk out a, a 50 that he probably should not have gone for. Diaz. An interception. And an open net to get a third. That's a ceiling pinch. Oh my goodness. It's a banger right on target. Top right. Atto, 126 kilometer per hour pinch. He just puts it on the ceiling and... It's a direct line drive to the net. My goodness. That is unstoppable. <laughs> if you could do that every time in ones, win the kickoff to the side wall, send it up into the ceiling, and then pinch it at 126 kilometers per hour into the top right, or into the, you know, basically the opposite corner of the net that the defender is, there's nothing they could do. That's just a goal every time. So if Atto could do that with any consistency, and that's what people are talking about when they talk about where Rocket League is going. You know, everyone always talks about pinches as being one of the best examples because they have such, you know, unorthodox power. And, and right now it's not used a ton, but, you know, we can imagine a world in which that pinch is something that the top players can all do regularly. And <laughs> oh, nice slot by Diaz. But imagine 1v1 just gets to the point where if you win a kickoff to the top right, like, you just ceiling pinch it every time and you just get a goal. I don't know how defenses start countering because if you don't get the midfield boost, then you can't really go to ceiling height. But certainly a 1v1 world I want to live in. For now, it is a rarity to see, and Atto uses it to maintain his lead, although that lead might be going away right now on this Diaz dribble. He set over the top of the crossbar into the backboard. And now Diaz has to get out around the ball to try and set up his possession, and Atto recognizes that as an opportunity to close the distance and make it uncomfortable for him. In fact, Seems like he's even stolen away possession. This time it won't be a ceiling pinch. It'll be a reset off the ceiling. And he actually just throws it directly at Diaz and he'll get punished with a goal the other way for that. He cannot place poorly in the ones game nowadays. You have to put the ball somewhere that forces a save into the corner, essentially. An uncomfortable save for the defender. They have to be focusing purely on getting the save and not 
set up the other way and put it right on him like that. Diaz has no trouble just prioritizing the counterattack. So 5-5, five, five. Diaz on the verge of potentially getting a sweep here against Atto. Has the reset, Atto pre-jumped it, fake, Atto back up. You got a touch on the ball, but it doesn't matter. It's still a Diaz goal. Atto, not a bad recovery back down to the ground after the first pre-jump. 43 seconds, Atto. Looks like his best game so far against Diaz. Taking on the near impossible challenge of playing against Diaz with higher ping than he has. Something that nobody has been able to beat him at yet. And now Atto with zero boost in 20 seconds. It's very unlikely unless Diaz gifts it to him and that is not the gift because Diaz will be picking up the back corner boost trying to freestyle the finish it seems like now that is actually one of the better gifts he's gonna get a 50 is gonna head out midfield but Diaz again controlling the boost and when you control the boost in the end game you control everything and he will get it to the ground ggs thanks for playing Diaz is too much to handle on US East and he gets this one in the sweep ggs 140 wait chat did he have 140 ping he had he had 104 in the previous servers it was low hundreds at the start of the match. I showed you guys the scoreboard. Sag.